Top of the day, wonderful people. Top of the day. Let me check this out real quick. Today we are reading the last two chapters of Daniel and then. Guess what? Hold on. Let's check it again quick. Uh, Daniel, 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 Daniel. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're reading Daniel. Then we're going to read, I forgot, the prayer of Azariah. Remember, he's one of the three Hebrew boys. That also should have been a part of Daniel, too. So we're going to start in. The prayer of Azariah is just one chapter, as well as Susanna. Susanna is just one chapter. We're going to read Susanna. Then we'll read the prayer of Azariah tomorrow. All right, y'all. So. That's why we that's why boo. Happy Monday. It is August the 10th, 2020. Day 222. Two, two, two. And we're reading Daniel 11, 12. Then we're going to read Suzanne. All right. So let's go ahead and get it started. Sit it right there. Blow this up. All right. Close, close. Can't see. Okay. That's better. All right. Here we go. All right. Daniel chapter 11. And greetings, Uncle Nathaniel. Hey, girl. Hey. Okay. Daniel chapter 11. I have been standing beside Michael to support. Remember, he was talking to Gabriel. Remember, he said, um, I think the last sentence of yesterday. I read the last sentence. Uh, he replied, do you know why I have come? Soon I must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. And after that the spirit of the and after that the spirit prince of the kingdom of greece will come meanwhile i will tell you what is written in the book of truth no one helps me against these spirit princes except michael your spirit prince that was the end of yesterday and today we pick up here i have been standing beside michael to support and strengthen him since the first year of the reign of darius the Mede. now then i will reveal to you the truth three more persian kings will reign to be succeeded by a fourth, far richer than the others. He will use his wealth to stir up everyone to fight against the kingdom of Greece. Then a mighty king will rise to power who will rule with great authority and accomplish everything he sets out to do. But at the height of his power, his kingdom will be broken apart and divided into four parts. It will not be ruled by the king's descendants, nor will the king hold the nor will the kingdom hold the authority it once had, for his empire will be uprooted and given to others. To the baby. Okay, come on. That's right here. Just chill out, chill out. Okay. The king of the south will increase in power, but one of his own officials will come will become more powerful than he and will rule his kingdom with great strength. Some years later, an alliance will be formed against the king between the king of the north and the king of the south. The daughter of the king of the south will be given in marriage to the king of the north to secure the alliance, but she will lose her influence over him and so will her father. She will be abandoned along with her supporters, but one of her relative but when one of her relatives becomes king of the south, he will raise an army and enter the fortress of the king of the north and defeat him. When he returns to Egypt, he will carry back their idols with him, along with priceless articles of gold and silver. For some years afterward, he will leave the king of the north alone. Later, the king of the north will invade the realm of the kingdom of the south, but will soon return to his own land. However, the sons of the king of the north will assemble a mighty army that will advance like a flood and carry the battle as far as the enemy's fortress. But twabble, Trina, but twabble. Then in a rage, the king of the south will rally against the vast forces assembled by the king of the north and will defeat them. After the enemy army is swept away, the king of the south will be filled with pride and will execute many thousands of his enemies, but his success will be short-lived. 
a few years after the King of the North, will return with a fully equipped army far greater than before. At that time, there will be a general uprising against the King of the South. Violent men among your own people will join them in fulfillment of this vision, but they will not succeed. Then the king of the north will come and lay siege to a forty to a fortified city and capture it. The best troops of the south will not be able to stand in the face of the onslaught. The king of the north will march onward unopposed. None will be able to stop him. He will pause in the glorious land of Israel, intent on destroying it. He will make plans to come with the might of his entire kingdom and will form an alliance with the king of the south. He will give him a daughter in marriage in order to overthrow the kingdom from within. But his plan will fail. After this, he will turn his attention to the coastland and conquer many cities. But a commander from another land will put an end to his insolence and cause him to retreat in shame. He will take refuge in his own fortress, but will stumble and fall and be seen no more. His successor will send out a tax collector to maintain the royal splendor. But after a very brief reign, he will die, though not from anger or in battle. The next to come to power will be a despicable man who is not in line for royal succession. He will slip in when least expected and take over the kingdom by flattery and intrigue. With deceitful promises, he will make various alliances. He will become strong despite having only a handful of followers. Without warning, he will enter into the richest areas of the land. Then he will distribute among his followers the plunder and wealth of the rich something his predecessors had never done. He will plot the overthrow of strongholds, but this will last for only a short while. Then he will stir up his then he will stir up his carriage and raise a great army against the king of the south. The king of the south will go to battle with a mighty hand, but to no avail, for there will be plots against him. His own household will cause his downfall. His army will be swept away and many will be killed, seeking nothing but each other's harm. These kings will plot against each other at the conference table, attempting to deceive each other. But it will make no difference, for the end will come at the appointed time. The king of the north will then return home with great riches. On the way, he will set himself against the people of the Holy Covenant, doing much damage before continuing his journey. Then at the appointed time, he will once again invade the south, but this time the results will be different. For warships from western coastlands will scare him off, and he will withdraw and return home. But he will vent his anger against the people of the Holy Covenant and reward those who forsake the covenant. His army will take over the temple fortress pollute the sanctuary, put a stop to daily sacrifices, and set up the sacrilegious object that causes desecration. Remember we talked about this in, in Maccabees, right? Y'all gotta y'all gotta go check this out. Did y'all read Maccabees yesterday? First uh first Maccabees chapter one. At least first Maccabees chapter one. Y'all gotta go read it because this is when all of this happens. It goes into detail. Matter of fact, I read like the first four chapters but very specifically towards the end of uh, first maccabees chapter one it goes into great detail about this very thing right here that we've been reading about since yesterday right mm. reading is fundamental and it will set you free truth will set you free Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. his army will take over the temple fortress pollute the sanctuary put a stop to the daily sacrifices and set up the sacrilegious object that causes desecration he will flatter and win over those who have violated the covenant, but the people who know their God will be strong and resist him. Wise leaders will give instruction to many, but these teachers will die by fire and sword, or they will be jailed and robbed. During these persecutions, little help will arrive, and many who join them will not be sincere. Some of the wise will fall victim to persecution. In this way, they will be refined and cleansed and made pure until the time of the end, for the appointed time is still to come. The king will do as he pleases, exalting himself and claiming to be greater than every god, even blaspheming the god of gods. He will succeed, but only until the time of wrath is completed. 
for what has been determined will surely take place. He will have no respect for the gods of his ancestors or for the God loved by women or for any other God, for he will boast that he is greater than them all. Instead of these, he will worship the God of fortresses, a God his ancestors never knew, and lavish on him silver, precious stones, and expensive gifts, claiming this foreign God's help. He will attack the strongest fortresses. He will honor those who submit to him, appointing them to positions of authority and dividing the land among them as their reward. Then at the time of the end, the king of the south will attack the king of the north. The king of the north will storm out with chariots, charioteers, and a vast navy. He will invade various lands and sweep through them like a flood. He will enter the glorious land of Israel and many nations will fall. But Moab, Edom, and the best part of Ammon will escape. He will conquer many countries. Even Egypt will not escape. He will gain control over gold, silver, and treasures of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians will be his servants. But the news from the east and the north will alarm him. And he will set out in great anger to destroy and obliterate many. He will stop between the glorious holy mountain and the sea and will pitch his royal tents. But while he is there, his time will suddenly run out and no one will help him. Last chapter of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. At that time, Michael, the archangel, who stands guard over your nation, will rise. There will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like stars forever. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. It's the information age, right? Then I, Daniel, looked and saw two others standing on the opposite banks of the river. One of them asked the man dressed in linen, who was now standing above the water, How long will it be until these shocking events are over? The man in linen, the man dressed in linen, who was standing above the river, raised both of, both of his hands toward heaven and took a solemn oath by the one who lives forever, saying, It will go on for a time times and half a time when the shattering of the holy people has finally come to an end all these things will have happened when the shattering of the holy people has finally come to an end all these things will have happened i heard what he said but i did not understand what he meant so i asked how will all this finally end my lord but he said, Go now, Daniel, for what I have said is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. But the wicked will continue in their wickedness, and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what it means. From the time of the daily sac from the time the daily sacrifices stop and a sacrilegious object that causes desecration is set up to be worshipped, there will be 1,290 days. And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way until the end. You will rest, and then at the end of days, you will rise again and receive the inheritance set aside for you. And that is the end of Daniel. But now, let's go home. Go ahead. Bring back the Sefer. Yeah. In the Sefer, uh, the prayer of Azariah comes right after Daniel. But I want to read Susanna this morning. But for some reason this morning, Susanna was just like, mm, mm, mm. And even that song, you know that song, Oh, Susanna, don't you? I woke up saying, where in the world did the song come from? You know, so I said, okay, well, we're going to read Susanna, and then we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll read Prayer of Azariah. So normally, stuff like that, I'm like, okay, when things like that happen, I begin to pay attention. I was like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to read Susanna today at the end of the day. Okay, so here we go. Susanna, also called, is, uh, is Shushana 
also called the Book of Susanna. There dwelt a man in Babel called Jehoiakim, I think it's Jehoiakim, and he took a woman whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Kelkiahu, a very fair woman and one that feared Yahuwah. Her parents were also righteous and taught their daughter according to the Torah of Moses. Now Jehoiakim was a great rich man and had a fair garden joining unto his house and and to him resorted the Jews because he was more honorable than all others. The same year were appointed two of the ancients of the people to be judges, such as Yahuwah spoke of, that wickedness came from Babel. Hold on. Let me read that again. The same year were appointed two judges of the ancients of the people to be judges, such as Yahuwah spoke of, that wickedness came from Babel from ancient judges, who seemed to govern the people. These kept much at Jehoiakim's house, and all that had any suits in law came unto them. Okay, so the judges, they lived at Jehoiakim's house. He had a nice little kingdom. And anybody that had problems, that had court cases and stuff, they brought it to him. Okay. Now, when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her man's garden to walk. And took, we talked about this... Uh, a few weeks ago and I was telling you about her and how she fasted, right? Okay. Now when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her man's garden to walk and the two elders were going and the two elders saw her going in every day and walking so that their lust was inflamed towards her and they perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes that they might not look unto heaven nor remember just judgments. And albeit they both were wounded with her love, yet dared not to show another his grief. For they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desired to do, that they desired to have to do with her. Yet they watched diligently from day to day to see her. And one said to the other, let us now go home for it is dinner time. <clears throat> and when they were going out, they parted one from the other, and turning back again, they came to the same place. And after that, they had asked one another the cause. They acknowledged their lust, and then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. Okay, so they was leaving now. That's why sometimes it's like, let me read from the NLC because it's more like today. And it's like, wait, what'd you just say? Okay, so if you didn't get that, they said they they both were lusting after her, but they didn't tell one another that they both was watching her. So one day they figured it out that each other was both watching her and they, that they both desired to be with her. So they said, look, let's figure out a time where we best we can go back in and you can have your way with her then i can have my way with her you know so they that's what they doing and it fell out as they watched a fit time she went in as before with two maids only and she was desirous to wash herself in the garden for it was hot and there was nobody there except the two elders that had hid themselves and watched her then she said to her maids bring me oil and washing balls and shut the garden doors that i may wash myself and they did as she bade them, and she shut and shut the garden doors, and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. So by the time the two maids went out, these two old nasty elders was hiding in the bushes somewhere. Now when the maids were going forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, Behold, the garden doors are shut. No man can see us, and we are in love with you. Therefore, consent unto us and lie with us. If you will not, we will bear witness against you that a young man was with you, and therefore you did send away your maids from you. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side, for if I do this thing, it is death unto me, and if I do not, I cannot, I cannot escape your hands. For it is better to fall, it is better for me to fall in your hands and not to do it than to sin in the sight of Yahuwah. And with with that, Susanna cried a loud voice, and the two elders cried out against her, then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at the, the privacy door to see what was done unto her. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed, for there was never such a report made of Susanna. And it came to pass the next day when the people were assembled, her man, Jehoiakim, the two elders all 
And it came to pass the next day when the people were assembled to her man, Jehoiakim, the two elders came also full of mischievous imagination against Susanna to put her to death. Boy, I tell you, these, these two old nasty worm-infested men. Ugh. Hold on. Let's read my sentence again. And it came to pass the next day when the people were assembled unto her man, Jehoiakim, the two elders came also full of mischievous imagination against Susanna to put her to death and said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of Kelkiyahu, Jehoiakim's woman. And so they sent. So she came with her father and her mother, her children and all her kindred. Now Susanna was a very delicate woman and beauteous to behold. And these wicked men commanded to uncover her face for she was covered that they might be filled with her beauty. Therefore, her friends and all that saw her wept. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon their head. I'm sorry. Then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her head. And weeping, looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in you. I'm sorry. And she, weeping, looked up towards heaven, for her heart trusted in Yahuwah. And the elder said, As we walked in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids and shut the garden doors and sent the maids away. And then a young man who was there hid came unto her and lay with her. Then we that stood in a corner of the garden, seeing this wickedness, ran unto them. And when we saw them together, the man we could not hold, but he was stronger than we, and opened the door and leaped out. But having taken this woman, we asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we do testify. Then, assem then the assembly believed them as those that were the elders and judges of the people, so they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting Elohim, that knoweth the secrets, and know all things before they be, you know that they have borne false witness against me, and behold, I must die. Whereas I never did such thing as these men have maliciously invented against me, and Yahuwah heard her voice. And this is why, like, some of these things have been taken out, especially in regards to the women. Um, and some of the things that they did and how they cried out to y'all, I think it was taken because you know how, and I'm not going to say this everywhere, but there's a stereotype against women that women are still trying to break out of. You need to shut up, be quiet, and don't say nothing, you know, and women realizing that Yahuwah is their help. And especially if you're living righteous, you can cry out to Yah and he will hear your voice and he will vindicate you. You know, so this just, I'm like, oh my gosh, this book is so good, right? Okay, I'm going to just read her prayer again. Verse 42. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O everlasting Elohim that knoweth the secrets and know all things before they be. You know that they have borne false witness against me, and behold, I must die, whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me, and Yahuwah heard her voice. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, Yahuwah raised up the spirit. Yahuwah raised up the spirit of a young youth whose name was Daniel. Like, why did they take this out, right? I just told you why. Who cried with a loud who cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them toward him and said, What mean these words that you have spoken? So he standing in the midst of them said, Are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth you have condemned a daughter of Israel? Return again to the place of judgment, for they have borne false witness against her. Wherefore all the people turned again in haste, and the elders said unto him, Come, sit down among us, and show it us, seeing Elohim has given you the honor of an elder. Then said Daniel unto them, Put these two aside, one from another, and I will examine them. So when they were put asunder from one another, he called one of them and said unto him, O you that are waxing old in wickedness, and now your sins which you have committed aforetime are come to light. For you have pronounced false judgment and have condemned the innocent and have not let the guilty go free, and have let the guilty go free. Albeit, Yahuwah says, the innocent and righteous shall you not slay. 
Now then, if you have seen her, tell me, under what tree saw you company? Under what tree saw you them companying together? Like, what tree did you see them under, doing what you said they were doing? He answered, under a majestic tree. And Daniel said, very well, you have lied against your own head. For even now, the angel of Yahuwah is received, has received the sentence of Yahuwah to cut you in two. So he put him aside and commanded to bring in the other and said unto him, O seed of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has deceived you and lust perverted your heart. Thus have ye dealt very, thus have ye dealt with the daughters of Israel and they for fear company with you. But the daughter of Judah would not abide in your wickedness. So pretty much what he just said is that wickedly he, um, he slept with the daughters of Israel because they feared him and what he would say about them and he could put them down. So he pretty much threatened their lives in order that he could have his way with the daughters of Israel. Like you're not to do these things to the daughters of Zion, to the daughters of Israel. Yahuwah does not look kindly to those things, right? He said, now therefore tell me under what tree did you take them company together who answered under a home tree? Then said Daniel unto him, Well, well you have also lied against your own head. For the angel of Yahuwah waits again. I'm sorry. For the angel of Yahuwah waits with a sword to cut you in two, that he may destroy you. Okay, babe. Go ahead. And with that, all the assembly cried out with a loud voice and praised Yahuwah. Who saves them that trust in him. And they arose against the two elders. For Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. And according to the Torah of Moses, they did unto them in such sorts as they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. And they put them to death. Thus the innocent blood was saved that same day. Therefore, Kelkiahu and his woman praised Yahuwah for their daughter. Susanna with Jehoiakim her man and all her kindred because there was no dishonor found in her for that day from that day forth was Daniel held in great reputation in the sight of the people and that my beautiful people is our reading for today and look I know I said I talked about this before I was thinking about Judith not Susanna so Judith was the one who did the fasting after her husband had passed away and she was just like the the queen mother and the entire nation lived in peace and everybody came to her for wisdom. But that was Judith and we read Judith already. So that is our reading for today, beautiful people. The last two chapters of Daniel, Daniel 11 and 12 and Susanna, which is only one chapter. So tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to read the prayer of Azariah and we are going to read Bell and the Dragon. And Baal and the Dragon is also one chapter. But after we finish reading that, we're going to start in the book of Hosea. So... I hope you enjoyed the reading for today. Where is my okay? So we got all this stuff, my notebooks. All right, so it is August the tenth, twenty twenty day, two hundred and twenty two, two 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 Monday. Let's go ahead, and Greg. You can get that from the front of there. Thank you. All right, the blessing is found in Numbers chapter six, verses twenty two through twenty seven. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. I'll see you in the morning. Nope, nope, nope. Tomorrow's Tuesday. I'll see you Wednesday. I'm resting tomorrow. Peace. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wrong button. Right here.